Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've had a good meeting. And this is the time where we have our open mic taking stock session, where we invite the participants to come up and tell us what they liked, what they didn't like, what we should keep, and what we should um, improve as well for next year. Uh, we will be having an open call for this, as, so if we don't have enough time to finish the open mic session here, you can still put in written um, remarks, which will be published on our website. And at the first open consultations as well, we will have a summary of it, and those who were not able to send can also um, have their say. With me here, I will just um, ask everybody to introduce themselves, um, or I can do it as well. On the far left, we have Mr. Yoichi Ida, who was the co-chair of the 2023 MAG, uh, who helped organize this meeting. He was the host country co-chair, and he is the assistant vice minister in the MIC ministry. And then we have Mr. Vint Cerf, who is the chair of the um, leadership panel. Myself, Chengatai Masango, I'm head of the IGF Secretariat. And to my right, we have the chair of the IGF 2024 MAG, who will also be listening very carefully because she'll be leading the organization of next year's meeting on the substantive part. And then on my extreme right, we have Paul Mitchell, our outgoing chair for the 2023 meeting. Um, oh, Carol Roach. Um, let me first give a chance for people here on the podium if they want to say at the anything, but the main part of this meeting is that we are in listening mode, we will take uh, good and copious notes, and um, we'll keep this in mind for next year. But please, Vin. It's Vin. Uh, you all know I can't resist an open microphone, so here we are. I just want to say uh, two or three things. First of all, I want to thank Ida San for uh, his uh, hosting of the Kyoto meeting, his country's contribution to all of our work this week. I'm sure uh, all of you are just as uh, exhausted as I am. This has been an intense week, but uh, from my point of view, a very productive one. I hope you'll be able to say the same thing. Uh, we look forward, of course, to the meeting coming up in uh, Riyadh next year. And I'd also like to officially, as the leadership panel chair, thank Paul Mitchell for his uh, two years of uh, extraordinary leadership of the MAG uh, and to in, uh, applaud Carol's arrival uh, as the incoming uh, MAG chair. Uh, I'm very eager to uh, hear what you have to say about this meeting uh, and I did I brought a notebook. I will be taking notes and uh, hoping that uh, you will help us make these meetings even more effective. So thank you. Back to you, Jen Masango. Hello. Um, I just wanted to, to say that we want to keep improving the MAG and the IGF. Uh, we want you to tell us what the issues are. That's the only way we can work things out in order to improve. Uh, let us know where you want to be, because that's about transformation. We also want to be relevant and stay relevant, so you need to tell us what you want. And we are willing to change and to adapt so that we can only be better. Thank you. And I would personally um, look forward to any of the feedback that you might have for this year's uh, adventures. I think, um, 
be had quite an extravagant, in a good way, uh, turnout. And I uh, very much look forward from my perspective to um, hear from you what you have to say. And uh, I want to thank you all in advance for being part, great participants in this IGF this year. I apologize for my voice being unable to talk that loud today. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in front, you do see two microphones, so if I would invite the audience to please come, and we'll take turns with the mics uh, back and forth uh, um, if you have anything to say and we're here to listen. Uh, we may not give you answers straight away, but um, I think it's important that we do listen and take into account what you say. Uh, yes, and two minutes, please, not more than two minutes. Thanks, Chengedai. This okay. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's very tough to tell your love of what's the scope to improve, and for five years I've been in love with IGF. Now let me come straight to the point. This is one of the fantastic forums. I love the way you all have shaped it up, and I love everything that you do here. Now here is a bit of constructive criticism slash ideas. Last year we heard 2.7 billion people are not connected to internet. This year it's 2.6 billion. That means in 25 years we are going to give internet to everyone, which I guess is a failure of conscience for the supremacy of greed. We need to stop it. And I think I, I, if I can get access to internet and a cafe at the airport free by advertising model, why can't we give internet to these 2.6 billion people on those models? And then lastly, at the end, we are not a spiritual organization. Let's talk about jobs. I think that's the final tangible outcome of this. And let's not mistake IGF as a narrative platform for big tech. We should give ample scope for ground level organizations. And one call out to the Honorable SG of United Nations. This is a UN body that if 2.6 billion people are not connected to internet, we have a high level panel for AI, but not high level panel for 2.6 billion people. It's misplaced priorities, you know. We should have a high level panel. I think the summit for the future should be the summit for the jobs. And uh, I think all that I've said over the last five years, I have seen positive action and support. So in no way it means criticism, it's just kind of saying that we have better priorities to focus on and just thinking of AI when 2.6 billion people do not even have access to internet. And if we give them the opportunity, the $105 trillion of the global economy will be $200 trillion. That is what we should aim for. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. And also, could you please also say your name and your stakeholder group, um, if you can. Marcus, please. Marcus Gummer, I'm speaking my capacity as senior advisor to Diplo Foundation and the Geneva Internet Platform. Uh, they kindly made, allow me to show a slide, and that's a project I'm involved in with Diplo. It's uh, IGF knowledge for our digital future. Over the years, the IGF has accumulated a tremendous amount of knowledge. And I do remember back in 2011 in Nairobi, Vint, you said then we should do some data mining. And now I'm quite excited to be involved in this project of using artificial intelligence to map the vast amount of knowledge that we have accumulated over the years. And then with, artificial, with the artificial intelligence, we see here a knowledge graph that shows the different intersections between the speakers, between the various uh, sessions where this knowledge was, where the various content was actually uh, mentioned. So with all this, we hope that we make it easier to navigate through this vast amount of knowledge. And it has, a, I think, a great potential for the future. And obviously, we would be very interested if other people, organizations, would like to join in in that project. Uh, more details are available on the Diplo website. And we uh, look forward to working with anyone who is interested. Thank you very much for your attention. Just one. Uh, a question for you, Marcus. Is this publicly accessible then on the website? It is publicly accessible now, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my pseudonym is JJ, and apologies for wearing sunglasses, but it is important to avoid facial recognition in certain social environments. 
I'm a researcher focused on uh, disaster resilient internet infrastructure, and my life's mission is to help bring about an evolved internet that removes barriers and ensures equitable progress for all. I'm here at the IGF. Hello. I'm here at the IGF for the first time, and I will. And while I find this forum to be an important step towards consensus and collaboration for the evolved internet, we want to see this evolution will never come to pass as long as we maintain hushed tones about marginalized civilian populations that are actively oppressed by a lack of internet access, especially those who have had their voice removed from the global stage as a result of weaponized shutdowns and senseless wars. As a proud Tigrayan, I come here to ensure that my people's voice was present in this community. The welcome I received was warm, and I value the conversations and collaborations that have been born from this presence. However, now I see my people struggle in another community, and I would be remiss and hypocritical to let this opportunity to speak on their behalf pass me by. The internet is instantaneous, and I hope an evolved IGF will be able to discuss movements of the internet in the same fashion. So with that in mind, I would like to express my outrage that the Palestinian people have been purposely removed from the internet this last week, and the depth of their civilian reality now hidden from the world due to the actions of a few radicals. I hope and encourage the IGF to make actionable forums for these populations to be represented in real time at these events. To say we're sorry for the pain is not enough. It wasn't enough for Tigray, and it isn't enough for, the Pal for Palestine either. To close, I would like to read a short poem by Tigist Hussein, an active and fierce defender of women's rights here in the IGF community. Your sorry makes me want to scream, like my body is being, filled, is being fried in an oil-filled pan. Your guilt is like a rash, something ugly itching under my skin, suffocating me with lifeless words. Thank you. Thank you. And now I think we have a remote, uh, remote hub from Benin. Can we, if not, we'll just go to the next speaker and then we'll um, come back to, to, to see if we can get them online, please. Mm -hmm. I um, thank you for that wonderful um, summit and I would like to say um, that's my fifth one. <laughs> and I also, I'm one of the hub for the Dominican Republic. Uh, while I'm here, I have uh, my hub is one in the in, uh, University of Yucateba and the Republican Dominican, uh, Balahona. I would like to say, uh, the, in the name of inclusivity, I would like to see more Latin American uh, to be participate in uh, next uh, IGF especially the Caribbean, and also I would like to see more people with disability. Uh, because if we want to make everything exclusive, we're talking about internet for all, it is uh, a must have, because uh, we cannot say we want one internet, one people, and uh, that's the way um, we don't have the people who are supposed to make the decision, and we don't see them. And, uh, uh, thank you for that time. My name is Andrews Bass. I come from the uh, Institute of Public Policy and Diplomacy Research. Uh, we are in New York, and also we um, encourage the internet by teaching young people, mentor them how they can use internet to be useful. And I'm so grateful I bring a lot of my students to be with me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, next, please, on my left. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Valery Skanevs. I'm uh, currently a master's degree student here at the KCGI uh, in Kyoto. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude. Uh, it's my first uh, IGF forum uh, that I ever visited. I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed uh, how many people came all over the world to express uh, their opinion about such an important topic, uh, especially in the age where the AI is becoming so predominant. Oh, the only one thing that I would like to give you as maybe as a little bit of a fresh opinion is I would really honestly like to see more actual programmers, more tech people. I'm, I mean, I know that it is uh, sometimes maybe will be beneficial even for the politicians who we have a lot um, joining um, members of the parliament from the uh, 
uh, Europe. Uh, we have uh, a lot of parliamentarians who are representatives of the United States and uh, other countries. Uh, so I would just wanted to see more programmers, more people who write this stuff, more people who develop this stuff so they can share their knowledge about the technology. And maybe this is going to be a great addition for the further IGF forums. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Walter Natris. I'm speaking in a personal capacity and as coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition IS3C, Internet Standards, Security and Safety. First, I want to thank Mr. Ida and all the people who made this great IGF and venue. I really love it, thank you. Um, the first thing is a worrying point. I have not been in a single session that had more than 25 people in it. And the limit down below was three. So do we have, what is the cause? Too many sessions, people doing other things, but something to investigate. I think the focus of this IGF was great, but I was in a session on AI and I heard solutions. And they're now somewhere, everybody flew home and is nowhere. Why not brought all these sessions together and try to come up with some sort of a you can't call it the declaration, but I don't have a better word. But because these solutions are in this building and are insufficiently shared. Then I come to dynamic coalitions. And I won't speak of my own, but in general, we have produced reports. Where are they? They're not recognized by the IGF. They're not on the IGF website. On the DC website, they will be there, but nobody knows these reports exist and they bring tangible outputs to this IGF. So why, not why, but how can we improve this and what sort of criteria should the DCs meet? And that will provide new focus, but also tangible outcomes. Finally, on the GDC. We've been discussing that for a long time. And what I would like to stress again, and I'd take this opportunity to do that here, if we want to take on more responsibility as IGF, and that perhaps happens only in 2025, but we have to start preparing ourselves. We need resources, we need to have a plan, we need to have focus, and need to play with it in 2024, so that we at least have the experience how to deal with this complex topic that we will be taking on as IGF community. And my DC has already indicated that we're willing to take on information. Uh, uh, sorry, information, the responsibility for that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Wood. Um, we have uh, Deborah Allen online. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for uh, taking my, my hand. All right, first of all, what I want to say is that this conference has been phenomenal in my perspective. I'm my, the stakeholders I represent are civil society. I'm based in The Hague. I come from New York City. My background is in clothing design for two decades in the 80s and 90s. And now I work as a peace builder here in The Hague, uh, promoting digital fluency and trustworthy sources online. So that's who I am. Um, when I've come to conferences, to me, it's about the energy and being here now online, but still feeling like I'm there on site is a testament to how great this conference has been, I would submit. I think having Vince Surf in the room next to the next gen innovators, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes there, but that was uh, next level for me, being able to um, interact with Vince Surf or the, and to see, uh, Sir, if you're on the platform, yes, hello. To, to just be able to look into your eyes, even if I'm here on screen looking into your eyes and talk about the difference between looking at the way we measure things from inside out in the digital realm compared to outside in, in the development realm. And to have your brain, I watched your eyes just go that, I, I see the difference. Like, and that connection, I've never met you in person, but here we are, right? So I just wanna honor that. And I want to honor the fact that this conference had these young people in a way that I have, I've, I've longed for because the experts in the room oftentimes now are the young people in the digital realm. And the uh, multi-gen, you know, we do a lot of Gen Z, Gen X, Boomer, et cetera, but it's really multi-gen and we know it. And this conference represented multi-gen, you know, this, 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 this new way of looking at it. The other thing I want to say is the, the passion of the people on the mics. I just heard the Dutch voice um, since I'm living here in the Netherlands saying, let's, let's, let's 
be more practical and figure out how we can convene all these these sources together. So I, I really appreciated that. The young man on the mic um, speaking up for what's fair and just. I can feel it. I can feel it sitting here at my desk all the way from there. So I just want to honor the fact that this online, offline, no line world that we're living in as a designer, this is one of the best times to be uh, working in the world together because the gatekeepers have changed. So the last thing that I want to, to say, but I want us all to hear together is let's redesign this. Let's redesign funding models. Let's redesign the way um, we, we, whatever it is, let's flip it. The time is now. And I'm just so happy to be together here with all of you and to be able to even um, say these things to you. So Vint, I hope you uh, work with the young people as much as you can and want to. And I know that they uh, are hungry for uh, working together with those who know. So I appreciate meeting you here. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, thank you so much, Deborah. It's Vint. Uh, I just wanted to tell everybody that my way of getting younger is to express my age in hexadecimal. So I'm 50 now. <laughs> Hello, uh, assalamu alaikum. This is uh, Umar Khan from Pakistan, a uh, community leader, a digital rights activist, a young, a young lawyer by profession. Uh, everything went very well. I think UN, the organizers, and the Japan, Japan people need a lot of appreciation for their work. They are wonderful. I'm just putting uh, a bit of disappointment with regards to the people of, with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have seen very less number of people with people with disabilities. And if I tell you that one of the session on the inclusion of the people with disabilities, there were eight speakers, but unfortunately there were only four people sitting in the room. This is uh, a lot of disappointment because the people with disability should not be the only who's own their self. I think we all need to own them. We all need to be with them. So I think IGF will be really working seriously for the next time to have a good number of speakers also and participants in IGF. With this, a last disappointment for those who are, belongs to the underdeveloping countries or developing countries with the visa process issue. When I went to the Islamabad embassy, in Japan embassy in Islamabad, they told us how can a global event, such a global event, event invitation be such an, a simple email? A lot of my friends from Pakistan were not granted visa just because of the invitation letter. I think the invitation email or the letter should be in such a proper way or should be modified, amended in a way or the embassies of the concerned countries in the concern um, countries should be directed about this program. Even when I went, the visa officer was not aware of this program. So I think IGF should really take this serious. I hope everyone has uh, enjoyed. I have learned a lot of things. See you all in the next IGF, inshallah. Thank you, everyone. All right, uh, thank you. Let us try the remote hub in Benin again. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, evening, everyone. So my name is Omar Farooq, a 17-year-old boy from Bangladesh, and I'm one of the nominees for prestigious student, International Children's Peace Prize 2023. Uh, I'm the founder and president of Project Tomna, which is an upcoming AI-powered mobile app project focused on children's mental health and child rights. And I was the youngest and only child panelist of every global digital compact sessions by UN Tech and Boy, representing children globally and provide statements on every thematic deep dives. So I'm here to share some thoughts on the IGF 2023 and, uh, and to make some suggestions for next year uh, with a focus on children and young people. Uh, first, I want to uh, commend the organizers of the IGF for putting on such successful event. It's been an inspiring to hear from so many stakeholders about the challenges and opportunities of the digital age. One of the things that has struck me most at the IGF is the importance of putting children and young people at the center of digital policy and governance. 
children and young people are the digital natives of tomorrow and we need to ensure that they have a safe and supportive online environment in which to learn grow and thrive thank you so much uh, thank you very much um, okay yes sorry mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Carla Velasco and I speak on behalf of the Association for Progressive Communications. First of all, we would like to express our most sincere recognition and gratitude to the government of Japan for their dedicated and careful planning and overall excellent execution of this, government, of, of this internet governance forum. The venue was excellent, the rooms were spacious and the impeccable logistics made the event enjoyable and effective. That said, we would like to share some feedback on the overall execution of the IGF. Firstly, while preparing for our participation and upon arrival, we found the IGF online schedule difficult to read and difficult to navigate. The way the agenda is designed is not user-friendly and this affects in terms of accessibility. As areas of opportunity, we kindly ask for future iterations, for links to be integrated in all formats of the schedule, and for the links to properly work in the most efficient and fast possible way. Additionally, as the IJF began, we noticed with concern that access to some domains for the ones connecting via Wi-Fi through the official network provided for the IGF were and are still blocked, such as the URL of the Amnesty International website and the URL of our APC's The IGF That We Want campaign about the value of the IGF that we launched at this, at this edition of the IGF. This raises questions about which domains are blocked and on what basis. Access to content has been limited in a process that is oriented to ensure a free, secure, and open internet. In terms of workshops and main, main sessions, we weren't able to participate meaningfully in some of them as they constantly clashed with each other. We believe that this had an impact on participation and in the possibility to use the inputs from workshops in the conversations that main, se that main sessions aim to appropriate. We also notice that some sessions are not necessarily contributing to deepen the analysis of issues. We are concerned about the predominance of techno-solutionist approaches in sessions related to the persistent digital exclusion in the global south, for example. Additionally, in terms of representation, we are also concerned that several sessions, for example, Digital Me, Being Youth, Women, and or Gender Diverse Online, and the workshop on Dynamic Coalition, Gender Disability, Gender, and Digital Self-Determination, failed to represent the diversity of voices that were speaking. From these sessions, people of color, gender diverse people, youth, and people with disabilities that spoke were mostly participating online. In the session, some of them shared the difficulties that didn't allow them to be on site. The main two reasons were related to visa applications and travel support. This brings us to an important issue that we think must be raised out loud. Before the event took place and while doing travel preparations, we received many reports, especially from members of our community in African countries, of Japanese embassies extending repeated multiple requests for extensive documentation related to financial and employment proof. For instance, in Uganda, where the Association for Progressive Communications team worked to support the visa application of its members and partners, the Japanese embassy refused to provide any reasons for the denial of visas for at least 10 persons applying to attend to the IGF. And in some cases, asked applicants to prove the, legit the legitimacy of the documentation submitted in order to process their visa. Therefore, we kindly ask for the next I, uh, for the next iterations to ensure that decisions on host countries for future editions of annual IGFs take into consideration the commitment of the government to provide a clear and accessible process through which all intended participants can access this vital space. To ensure that host governments instruct their missions and embassies as early as possible on the need to facilitate visa processes for people from the global south, in particular from Africa to ensure that host governments put in place measures that ease specific visa-related barriers I'm sorry, related I'm, I to I may have to cut you off because you're almost double your time. Okay. Uh, you can send it to the um, IGF Secretariat and we'll look into it. I wasn't aware of the first two. I'll look into that as well. But thank you very much for thank your you. intervention. Next, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amrita Chaudhary, wearing my hat as chair of IGFSA. Uh, thank you for organizing a great IGF. I think most of the things went with time, everything was seamless. Yes, we do have hitches, but I think overall, if we look at it, it was great. The reason why I'm here is today IGF is doing much more. We have the dynamic co coalitions, policy networks. We are seeing more people coming into IGF. That needs more resources, and IGF is also at a critical uh, stage with, uh, you know. So I think 
just like uh, you know, people are coming here, contributing, getting from the IGF. I think it is important that people go out and also speak to people on how the, you know, to bring in more resources to the IGF. We from IGFSA try to support the national regional IGFs. But I think if the word goes and, you know, people also start thinking on how uh, the society, you know, the the communities outside this room also can contribute because just as we get from the IGF, if we want more, we also need to contribute. So this is an urge that everyone thinks about, you know, how resourceful can be. The leadership panel is definitely thinking about it, but they cannot do it in silos. There would have to be more hands on it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bia Barbosa. I'm from the civil society. Uh, on behalf of the Collision Rights on the Network, an alliance of more than 50 Brazilian civil society organizations, many of them are here in Kyoto, we would like to thank the Japanese people for their incredible kind welcome. We also welcome the return of Brazil's leading role in the international sphere, where the government has taken up fundamental issues like the fight against social inequalities and the urgency of environmental protection. But much needs to be done at home. Brazil faces profound digital inequality, with the majority of the population enjoying precarious access to the internet, with billions of reais being spent in the wrong way to supposedly connect people. At the same time, despite having a pioneering law guaranteeing the rights of internet users, the Marco Civil of Internet, Brazil keeps facing wrong waves of disinformation and hate speech online, with an impact on our electoral process, on the public health, and at the rights of women, children, black, and LGBT people. people. Due to a strong pressure from platforms and the far right parties, we still haven't managed to pass a legislation that democratically regulates digital platforms. So we really need to do better at home. That's why we look forward to the possibility of the CGI, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, uh, to host a mode stakeholder meeting next year in our country where we can together set goals and concrete commitments for the internet we want. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Farzana Badi from Digital Medusa. Um, I, I have a nostalgic moment at this time. In 2018, I also made this comment that uh, artificial intelligence is a very important topic. However, we are discussing internet governance here. And as long as artificial intelligence has implications for internet governance, then this is the right venue to talk about it. So we should, in our uh, future sessions about in artificial intelligence, have the um, internet governance aspect to it as well. Another comment is about technical community uh, participation at different uh, workshops. Unfortunately, uh, we have not integrated the technical community in our uh, workshops. They bring uh, great expertise. They are the reasons that we actually have access to the internet and uh, our online presence is run by them, but uh, uh, we do not integrate them in our policy discussions, uh, which we need to pay attention to. Also, I want to debunk the narrative that we are swimming in bad content and disinformation, and this, might, this narrative might actually result in a rush to solutions that might hamper our access to the internet. So we need to be very careful with, uh, when we argue such things, especially on high-level panels. And let's make these meetings about internet governance. Internet and connectivity still matters. Let's not take the internet for granted. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let us try the Benin Hub again. Maybe third time's the charm. Hello, I represent civil society. So this is an NGO that I am here representing. And we try to talk about the ethics. So we have organized second hub, in other words, second workshop on this subject. And 
we are very interested in what is happening on an international level in terms of internet and the ethics. So we want to understand where we can maybe get more training on this subject in Benin so that we can go further in our understanding of the internet. Because what is quite clear is today the situation, well, we can't ignore the internet anymore in our country. It's there. And whether one is connected or not, the internet is nonetheless part of our lives. And we know that in our country, the women play a much more important role than men on an economic point of view. So it is of the utmost importance for them to use the internet so that they can better organize and continue their economic development. I would also like to thank those of you who have organized this forum because we have many people here who had never heard of the IGF and they have come to hear about what is happening for the first time. So we really want to thank you wholeheartedly for what you've done. Thank all of you who have communicated. Thank you all for everything that you have said. Now, we have another concern, nonetheless. Now, it's true. When one looks at a meeting like today, we can see, yes, there are lots of experts, and there's lots of organizations that have taken part. But what we would like is well, our recommendation, rather, is that we could maybe talk a little bit more about the policies that we can then, in turn, help more people to benefit the Internet with. Thank you. My name is Bakhtiar Mamadov. I am Deputy Head of Administration of the Ministry of Digital Development and Transport of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to greet all uh, IGF participants. IGF has a unique feature, and uh, in World Summit on Information Society, uh, decided to gather representatives of different stakeholders in one uh, unique possibility, such as Internet Governance Forum, which allows to the people of different uh, background, different activities to be together and uh, solve issues related with internet development. And uh, I'm thankful to all who put a lot of contribution for making it. We were host of the IGF 11 years ago in 2012, and uh, we know that how it is difficult, but we see everywhere improving our, our capacity of the IGF. I want to say a few words about uh, what we did so far in our application of the development of the technologies and innovation, and digital transformation is a priority in agenda of the government of Azerbaijan. And uh, according uh, to the current situation, if we ask what is a strong economy, uh, before we could say that it's population, natural resources, but now we have to say that technology and innovations are more important for development of the each countries. And uh, uh, a strong digital economy can help to achieve inclusive and sustainable growth, strengthening competitiveness and increase resilience to shocks. And government of Azerbaijan is committed to transform its economy from the economy depend on natural resources to innovation-based economy. And nowadays, 2.6 billion people, as it was mentioned several times, still offline and not connected to the internet. Azerbaijan is doing uh, different programs, and by the end of 2024, uh, we plan to achieve 100 percent home broadband internet coverage with a minimum speed of 25 megabytes per second. And we are working with private sector to create private public partnership to speed up the process, and we plan to provide uh, incentiveness for private sector, operate state-owned infrastructure, and various activities uh, has been conducted for implementation of this, and one of the also new achievements of Azerbaijan, uh, establishing smart cities and smart uh, villages in newly 
uh, liberated areas where people are returning back uh, after 13 years, uh, and uh, 30 years uh, being uh, internally displaced people, and uh, we gain Thank also some much. kind of experience. And uh, mm. I wish in future uh, such kind of experience will be shared, and uh, best practice for IGF uh, stakeholders will be shared with all of uh, us. And Thank I you. wish to all uh, you all the best in future IGF events. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm an Shinche, a student. I have learned a lot of things through this days of meeting, so that I'm very grateful for this meeting. I hope that in future, the meeting can be held in their respective countries or regions. So in addition, I hope that can we introduce a regulation or a, su or a suggestion to regulate the highly popular digital currency around the world, which has to some extent the world. Good afternoon, members of the panel, and to each and every one of us. I'm James Gregor Asuelo from the Bridging Leaders for Sustainable Development of the Republic of the Philippines. And first and foremost, I would like to congratulate the government of Japan and the UN DESA and the men and women behind the IGF for the successful conduct of the IGF 2023. Uh, I would like to share three points uh, that might help and, and some of my suggestions. Uh, first, I suggest that if we can find uh, opportunities, the policies, uh, I, I suggest that if we can urge member, uh, members of the government, the creation of the Internet Governance Council in various local governments among member states to spearhead programs and projects and policies to address the myriad of challenges that we face today in relation to the internet digitalization and innovation. Number two, I urge the government around the world to pass laws and legislations to provide incentives to private sector and companies who will invest in rural areas and underserved communities to increase connectivity to the internet. And uh, number three, if we can find solutions or if we can find ways to urge the government and the private sector to support startups, initiatives, and communities through access to funding, membership, mentorship rather, and access to markets to help spur economic growth in developing countries. Thank you so much. Thank you, please. Merci. Thank you, Sébastien Bachelet, member of ESOC France and co-organizer of IFG in France and president also of the European Association of Internet Users. Thank you to the speaker of, the, of BINA for having spoken a language other than English, because I think if this place is not a place where many languages are spoken, well, I think that we must remember that the tools that are put at our disposal should be used. Now, People have already thanked the Japanese government before me, and I also would like to do so. I'd also like to thank all of the many people who have taken part in the organization of this conference. I'd like to thank Japan. It's true that a multi-stakeholder conference of this ilk is organized not only by the government, but also by representatives of civil society, the private sector. And perhaps I should mention two other things before closing. It's true that too many meetings kill meetings, and I think perhaps there were subjects that were discussed in parallel sessions that put have, should have been put together and would have allowed us to have more participants during these sessions, and indeed to have been more interactive and useful in their nature. Second point, we've talked a lot about artificial intelligence. Perhaps it would be time to talk about our collective intelligence that we have brought together here. Thank you. Thank you very much, please. Gracias. I will speak English, uh, Spanish, please. Uh, I am, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, me llamo Wilson. I am Nelson Guillermes. I am from Brazil. I am a non-trans binary person. I would like to put forward 
a criticism for there wasn't enough representation for vulnerable peoples. There are different types of people with different bodies. These are the bodies that are the most impacted by technologies. This goes beyond borders. We need to enable these people, allow these people to be part of this environment. When I go and I register for an event, they don't have any type of accommodation for non-binary or trans people. And my body is not respected. This is the very first time that Brazil has a non-binary delegation with trans people. I want to, we need to be part of this because there are numerous risks in our lives. We need to be sitting at the table to foster human rights with different types of bodies. Otherwise, we are not able to speak about human rights because it would be sheer, utter hypocrisy. We need to hone in on these marginalized peoples. We need to include them into the mainstream. We are diverse bodies. We need to be understand, we have to be able to understand the internet governance, and we need to take part in all of these discussions. Thank you. I will have to close the queues now. So these are the last people, please. Uh, the queues closed. OK, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Azan Khan. I'm here with my uh, fellow colleague, uh, Natalie Tertsova. And we are current uh, fellows of the U European Dialogue on Internet Governance's youth program, YouthDig. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity first to call out the absolutely incredible work that the Internet Society's Youth Standing Group has done uh, with the version of the Internet Atlas uh, uh, for this year, which is Quo Vadis Youth. Uh, which is basically where are the youth going uh, and recognizing the absolutely incredible work that the youth has done uh, in the internet governance space. I also wanted to take this opportunity along with Natalie to uh, present the uh, youth dig messages for this year very, very briefly. We covered four topics, so I'll cover two and she'll cover two very, very quickly as well. The first one is that we want to create a brighter future with artificial intelligence having safety and prosperity for all. Uh, we wanted states to assume leadership roles in promoting collaboration in artificial intelligence research and development and invest and support AI alignment and development research equally. Uh, governmental bodies should also ensure that high-risk AI systems are supplemented by human involvement in order to prevent a single points of failure. We also wanted to improve the clarity of a lot of pieces of legislation, including the AI Act. We want to call for the teaching of AI, namely its potential usages, limitations, and ethical implications of its use. And we want governmental bodies and civil society to advocate for AI to be regarded as a common good, not something that is solely within the remit of certain organizations alone. Secondly, we want no back doors in the future of internet governance. We want to move towards cooperative and evidence-based internet governance. We want to call on the international community to create enforcement mechanisms to hold governments to account for all of their commitments contained in the various declarations, for example, the Declaration for the Future of the Internet. We want all stakeholders involved in regulation or the development of the internet to conduct impact assessments to avoid internet fragmentation. We want to call on states to systematically engage with the technical community. We want a framework for acceptable online activism, and most important, because we are the youth, we want to make sure that all uh, past and future uh, youth messages are addressed by the respective stakeholders and that the youth are systematically involved throughout decision-making processes. Thank you. Okay, you carry on. Uh, but the queue is closed, so the last two, you're not going to get on. I'm so right. sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Additionally, we aim to build a conscientious digital ecosystem. We prioritize enhancing the digital skills of children through caregiver and educator education to empower them while mitigating online risks. We urged collaboration among stakeholders to include marginalized voices in decision making, fostering an inclusive digital landscape. For rural regions, we appealed for increased internet infrastructure investment to reduce fragmentation and to create work opportunities. Finally, we promoted cohesive standards for interoperability to prevent vendor lock-in and excessive market concentration. Um, these efforts aim to create a world that is inclusive, digitally empowered, and respectful of individual rights. 
We hope that these messages from youth can be implemented and acted upon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. I am Peter Mysak from Access Now, and I'm joined by Valeria Betancourt of Association of Progressive Communications. We are speaking on behalf of a growing chorus of civil society organizations to express our alarm regarding the decision that the government of Saudi Arabia will be the host of the next annual meeting of the Internet Governance Forum. We call on you to reverse this decision and urgently review the decision-making process. Saudi Arabia has led an unprecedented and relentless campaign against freedom of expression online and off. Activists are being tortured, detained, disappeared, and killed. A 54-year-old retired teacher was sentenced to death for a few tweets. A 34-year-old mother of two children and PhD students was sentenced to 34 years in prison and an additional 34-year travel ban. Two Saudi Wikipedia volunteers remain unjustly imprisoned in connection with their work advancing access to information. There is no civic space in the country, no independent civil society organizations. As we commemorate the five-year anniversary of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, there is still no justice. As a result, we are physically afraid to attend. Riyadh is not a safe space for most marginalized groups, women, human rights defenders, LGBTQ groups, and we are equally concerned about transnational repression outside of Saudi borders. We have heard the importance throughout this conference of centering the experience of women in all their diversity and to apply a, len a gender lens to all areas of our work. Saudi Arabia is one of the most dangerous places on earth for women to participate um, in these conversations. Sorry, I'm, I may have to stop you a little bit there. Um, I, have, I have time remaining. Uh, As general counsel no, no, of my um, organization, just I cannot of... ethically permit my staff to travel to this country. Yeah, uh, we, we, we do have a code of conduct and the way we should um, encourage this course. Um, Thanks. Thank you. So, um, I'll just ask you to add here, I, I am aware there are concerns, and that's very important, yes, but just the way that the concerns are expressed is also important. Thank you. I'm, I'm expressing facts, and I'm, I'm happy to, um, to take this conversation, you know, if you want to investigate these facts further offline. Um, okay. I will hand off to my uh, partner. Yeah, I'll be here. Thank you. Because of the, of the reasons that my colleague Peter has uh, exposed, we feel that the uh, legitimacy of the multi-stakeholder uh, approach and model is threatened by the situation. That the, the multi-stakeholder participation forms the cornerstone of the IGF. So civil, and civil society participation plays a vital role in upholding the multi-stakeholder model. So a context that is not conducive for the participation, the effective and meaningful participation of civil society could undermine not only civil society ability to participate and contribute, but also put the IGF, which is in a vital moment as well, in, in risk and risk. So the IGF keeps being a key piece in the internet governance and digital cooperation ecosystem in a, in a moment in which it's vital to strengthen it. So we really uh, want to emphasize the call to uh, reverse and review the the process through which the decision has been made. Thank you. This is Mariko Kobayashi from Wide Project in ISOC Japan chapter. Uh, so firstly, uh, congratulations to the success of IGF 2023. I appreciate for the IGF Secretariat and Japanese government and the IGF leadership panel and our members. And as a person from tech community, um, personally, it has been a bit challenging uh, in the past uh, uh, the four or five years because um, because um, the so I, I've been uh, trying to submit in the workshop, uh, which is actually related to the internet infrastructure technology, and but. Um, compared with emerging tech, uh, which is a quite popular, such as AI or ChatGPT, I think it's very difficult to bring the sort of uh, the the sometimes a very tech and uh, a bit difficult for understand other stakeholders people uh, to uh, understand the issues. 
Uh, so um, I, I wish um, so there's still uh, the issues to be discussed in the Internet Governance Forum, and I wish uh, I, we, we can bring more uh, the, the people from tech community and we can see more um, tech-related issues in the Internet Governance Forum, not only like the, the buzzword <laughs> emerging technology, uh, because the, especially the Internet critical resources in the Internet infrastructure is directly connected related to the connectivity issues and the digital governance issues. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And then our last speaker. Um, I think you were the last one when I closed. No. Uh, we have to keep on time. Sorry. Please, please, one, one session. No. Uh, because others, but others have sat down. So I, just because you, st you stood up, uh, you can send it in. But thank you. Please. Hello, everybody. My name is Thorsten Krause from Germany Civil Society. This is or was my first on-site IGF. For me, it was a real incredible experience. And therefore, I would like to thank all the MAC members and, of course, the IGF Secretariat um, for your work for organizing, planning, managing, realizing this great event. Thanks to all of you. You are wonderful people. As a political scientist and child rights researcher, I really appreciate that so many sessions and workshops dealing with the, child of the, yeah, with the rights of the child and expressing their needs and interests of young persons. I believe with no doubt that uh, child rights, um, a child rights based approach um, would be a good approach um, to serve for a better world for all of us on and offline as well. Last but not least, I want to thank uh, my boss uh, for trusting in me um, to act as a child rights manager um, and to strive for the goals of our Digital Opportunities Foundation uh, internationally. Thank you so much, Jutta Kroll, also for um, yeah, encouraging me. Um, I would like to conclude with a wish to see you all uh, next year at the IGF and hopefully in a world um, more peaceful than uh, today with less conflicts and war. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, so I would now like to see if there's anybody on the panel to, if they want to say any closing remarks. So thank you very much, just briefly. Uh, I would like to, to extend uh, uh, our uh, highest gratitude to, to the kind words uh, expressed by speakers and also to, to everyone uh, joining us on site here. And uh, uh, I, I uh, really appreciate the kind words and uh, 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 words of gratitude uh, uh, given to us, and the credit uh, uh, should uh, uh, should. Uh, for my uh, colleagues, not only in the ministry, but also from the uh, private sectors and uh, other communities who have been working very hard to prepare all the facilities and the hospitalities uh, uh, presented here. And I also uh, uh, extend my personal thanks to to uh, uh, UN team, uh, uh, Chengde team, and also uh, the Mark Chia, Paul Mitchell, and also the Dr. Uh, uh, Bintzorf uh, sitting here. Yeah, you may uh, easily understand, uh, you know, how uh, I feel, how much uh, uh, excited I feel, you know, they see uh, the, the part of the internet sitting next to me and discussing all together. Even my son was so excited to see his name card. And, so it was uh, really encouraging for us uh, to discuss uh, under his leadership uh, 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 how uh, we could improve and how we could uh, realize uh, the internet we want. And uh, this uh, 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 theme uh, we need to, to continue uh, over the next coming years. And uh, uh, we will definitely, our government is deep, uh, strongly committed to protect and promote the multi-stakeholder approach uh, in IGF, and we believe uh, uh, we will uh, uh, to, uh, work all together to, to discuss and to improve and strengthen uh, IGF through the discussion uh, on 
uh, global digital compact. And also, uh, we look very much forward to working all together uh, when we have uh, Wishes Plus 20 review in coming years. So thank you very much uh, to, to everybody. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm uh, representing uh, the Japanese government and Japanese community. And uh, uh, I really, uh, 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 I'm, I'm really grateful for, for, for uh, everybody, uh, for everything uh, uh, you brought uh, uh, through the uh, conference. Thank you. Uh, very briefly, why is this man smiling? It's because it's almost the closing session and it's the end of a really, really, not just week, but months and months of planning. So thank you very much for that. Just a reminder, we did run out of time uh, on the open mics, but we have not run out of time and space for your written inputs. Please send them in. The written inputs in some ways are even more valuable because we don't have to capture them uh, by writing quickly while you're talking even though we are capturing this uh, recorded for, for uh, reference. I, I really look forward to another candid uh, opportunity to see all of you next year. And in the meantime, please do take action in your national and regional IGF activities and provide that input from, uh, to the leadership panel and to the MAG. It's really, really valuable during the course of the year as we're planning for the sessions in the annual meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. That ends the open mic session. And um, I would like to end with giving a hand of applause for our outgoing chair, MAC chair, Mr. Paul Mitchell. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.